Welcome to the Weekly Huddle Podcast. I'm your host, Owen, and today I have back on one of my most frequent collaborators, it seems, and someone I work with on a daily basis, uh, Caleb from KillPro88 uh, on YouTube. Healthy uh, 1.5 thousand subscribers now on the YouTube channel. I'm, it's oh like, my gosh, yeah. Do you, do you remember? Thank when, you. No problem. Remember when you almost lost the whole channel because the NFL wanted yes. to be a dick? That would have been crazy. <laughs> I honestly, it's always in the back of my mind, which is the worst feeling because sometimes I'll like refresh something and it won't pop up. I'm like, oh God, did they cancel me again for some reason? <laughs> but luckily right now we're going strong. Hopefully that's in the past. But yeah, yeah. Uh, things are going good right now. Yeah. And uh, I brought you on because now we only have one game of college football left, which is the uh, college football playoffs between Georgia and Alabama. Both teams have, well, Alabama has a quarterback who will potentially be in uh, draft consideration Georgia not so much but now so now we have all the games that we're gonna have for the current quarterback crop of this draft class we're gonna go through and I know just from previewing it where our lists are a tiny bit different uh, we're gonna go from five to one our favorite uh, prospects quarterback wise and before I do that and while I pull up the dynasty index on my app on my phone would you like to tell the fine people at home what the dynasty index is all about yeah, it is the perfect place for Dynasty Fantasy Football and draft coverage. Um, I know you've been plugging in a lot. Owen's been doing the defensive side and offensive linemen, and then I've been doing all the offensive players and the Dynasty rankings as well. So pretty much you've got everything you need to be successful in Dynasty or just learn about the draft. we got every player uh, where we're thinking they're going in the NFL. For offensive players, we got where they're going in Dynasty. Owen's been cranking out write-ups. we got our analytics guy uh, working on some stuff in the background. So plenty of stuff to come. Uh, we just did our mock draft too uh, through the Discord as well. So a uh, ton of features, always working on more stuff. So big things coming, and obviously Owen's a big part of that too. So um, yeah, check it out. Um, Kill Pro Eighty Eight on Twitter. Um, DM me. We'll work things out. Uh, you, you make me feel so proud for the work I've been doing. Uh, just an update for everybody for when this comes out. I have just today. I have added in Sean Ryan, offensive tackle of UCLA. Andrew Stuber off the tackle Michigan. I'm do, we're currently writing the. I'm finishing up the write up on Lewis Sign Scene, uh, the safety from Georgia. Uh, I, I knocked out a couple cornerbacks the other day and a couple more safeties. I'm just trying. I know I basically all of my positions besides edge rusher. I have like 20 of them in there, but most of the positions I, I have, know. I have like 10 uh, or so so far. So I'm trying to I'm trying to level it out right now. Uh, lay off the edge rushers for a little bit, even though because there was just so there was just so many in this class. But we're not talking about edge rushers today. We're talking about quarterbacks. I have my list up. You can find my li- my my list and his list both on Dynasty Index. Mine is under the Weekly Huddle Big uh, Big Board. You can sort the quarterbacks there. His is in the official Dynasty Index ranking charts. So let's start with number five. We'll go back and forth. I'll let you go first for this one. Who is your number five quarterback on your list? Number five, I have a guy. I feel like we're both sort of on the same page where we both mm-hmm. want to like him, but he just makes it so hard, and that's – Desmond Ritter out of Cincinnati. I mean, he has all the athletic traits, arm talent in the world that you want in a starting quarterback. He's got all the potential. It's just doing it on a consistent basis, putting it all together. I mean, he he's a streaky quarterback. There's been a few games where he starts off slow, and it's like, whoa, what is this guy? And then he'll he'll put it on in the second half and show you uh, just what you're looking for. But It's those inconsistencies that make me worry, like, uh, how is this guy going to take the next step when he's going to be facing up against NFL talent? Um, If they can figure it out, uh, if he can figure it out, if he goes to a good landing spot, um, he he has all the potential, probably the best potential in this class, but he's so far from it right now that, unfortunately, as much as I want to like him, he's, he's at number five in my rankings. Yep, so number five, I also have Desmond Ritter, quarterback out of Cincinnati, He's kind of like, so in in the Dynasty Index, we have some players have their comps on there, and you have them comp to Josh Allen right now, and I totally understand it, because when I first saw him, I was like, this is kind of like a Josh Allen comp, where he's got a strong arm, he's super athletic, tall, kind of a bigger quarterback guy, uh, but I saw someone else, I was listening to the Draft Dudes podcast, the, guy who do, the guys from the Draft Network, their podcast, they were talking about how they comped him to Ryan Tannehill coming out of college and kind of his early years in Miami where he was this converted receiver so he had all this athleticism and he had the arm talent but he just couldn't whether it was mentally or mechanics wise which in my personal watchings I think there's a lot of it, it comes down to mechanics especially the footwork 
he's been able, he's not able to consistently with ball placement. He can make hard throws, but then at the same time he misses some easy throws, which is where again like the Josh Allen comp comes in. So he just needs to clean that up, and I feel like he's I don't know if he's a first round like his traits his traits make me want to take him in the back end of the first round, but I don't know. I mean, there's guys like Drew Locke you've seen in the past who had all these things. Or like same thing, where like, oh, he has the arm talent. He needs to get the mechanics down. Can you coach that into him? And then he falls to the second round, and then you prove you can't. Whereas Josh Allen, you take him in the early round where he has these physical gifts, and they, he can be coached into it. But he, I don't know if he's more of an outlier or if he's where the new le- the league is trending towards with coaching and things like that. It's the problem. For every Josh Allen, there's nine Drew Locks, and to get the right one down, it's so hard. Um, like I said, I want to believe in Ritter, and um, I mean, he didn't show a ton in the playoff game, but they were pretty outmatched on the, the offensive line up in the trenches. Oh, yeah. But yeah, back half of the first round, I'd be fine. If he could find somewhere to maybe groom behind a quarterback, uh, I'd be okay with that, but I don't see him starting right away at the next level. If you had to, I'm just spitballing right here. I know I didn't really, I didn't really prep you for this part, but if you had to pick a team you think would fit best for Ritter, so it could be a team in the back half of the first, set first, or even a team in the early second. What kind of team are you looking at might be might be the best fit for him? Whether they have a quarterback in place already, or they're just looking to add more talent to the quarterback room for maybe a potential and you know contract situation situation. Yeah, I'm, I just pulled up Tankathon to look at the draft order, see yeah. what we're sort of looking at here. Um, I mean, in the back half, maybe Detroit, if they don't go quarterback, uh, that'd be a place where you can sit behind Jared Goff for a year. They're so slowly building assets. I mean, for the talent they had, they had a pretty good year this year. Um, that could maybe be a landing spot. Tampa Bay's back there. I know they drafted Kyle Trask, but he's kind of irrelevant. Um, <laughs> besides that, there's really no one down at the bottom that is really looking for quarterback. I mean, all these teams have great quarterback oh, play. Yeah. Um, Which is typically so, why they're yeah. at the bottom. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's a, that's so. If I think the Lions at least have to come away with one quarterback in this class, and whether they decide to go, you know, with a top edge rusher at the beginning or uh, uh, grab a quarterback late, um, that could maybe be a team that looks for a developmental quarterback. I like that. I like that Detroit comparison. Uh, Cincinnati is not that warm of a place, so it's he's already accustomed to that. Plus, Detroit plays in a dome, I believe. Um, they plays he can go there. Yeah. He he's got the athletic tools that you know. Again, he should be taking maybe their, with the Rams pick or even maybe their first pick in the second round, which I think is going to be like two or three. Um, it should be it should be a good spot for him there if Detroit wants to you know add some else some more things around him. All right, so we'll move on to QB four. Uh, hit me with your QB four here. Who do you got there? <laughs> and this is where it begins. I've got Malik Willis at four. <laughs> You're going to paint me as a Malik Willis hater, but I think it's just because <laughs> you're so high on him. Um, I do – I've been watching him a little more. I do like him a little more. I, I, ra- I gave him a few bumps. Um, I mean, the athleticism, it's sort of the same. I mean, he's, he's so quick, so fast, the escapability, uh, and he's got the arm and the, the build to be a top quarterback. Again, it's sort of the accuracy issues. I think he's a little more consistent. Well, he's definitely a little more consistent than Desmond Ritter. I know I just watched the Syracuse game, and he showed some nice throws. I mean, that's a that's an actual D1. I mean, they're all D1, but, like, an actual competition game outside of, like, Colgate and random schools he'll play. I know mm-hmm. against Ole Miss, he sort of got outmatched, but, again, like, with Ritter against Bama, the line really made it difficult for him. So it's hard to evaluate in some of those situations, but – It's another guy that has the tools, I think, that he could be a top quarterback, um, but I just haven't really seen him put it all together. He had some turnover issues, I know, as well. So still some things to clean up for me. Uh, But again, another guy where I see the potential, and I think, you know, he's still a little bit bit, bit better than Ritter. So, um, yeah, I have him where I was around one guy, late first in Dynasty Superflex. no, you, you'll probably talk about him way later, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I'll get into my uh, my defenses for uh, why I believe Malik Willis should be better than your QB4. But for right now, I'll talk about my QB4, which I have is Sam Howell, quarterback out of North Carolina. Uh, he's kind of a if I so I'm, if I had to throw a comp out, uh, which I'll ask your comp from Malik Willis in a second. I know you kind of elaborated on some kind of his uh, traits there. Uh, I know this has been kind of like my. This is not an original comp, but a comp for Sam Howell is probably more like a Baker Mayfield kind of guy. Uh, he definitely he's able to distribute that ball. He when he had 
the playmakers he had in North Carolina last season, he was able to have his most successful season because he was able to just distribute the ball to them and keep it moving, keep it keep uh, the ball out of his own hands. This year he's shown more. My biggest issue with him was he wasn't able to cre- uh, create plays out of the pocket, out of structure, where like if the play broke down, he wasn't able to get out and really make those plays. This season, however, he's been able to turn it up a little bit. He had like six straight 100-yard rushing games or something like that at quarterback. I, that, that was crazy. I didn't think he had that in him. Uh, that definitely gave him the boost over a guy like Desmond Ritter, who I thought was so much superior athletically to to Howell that I had to just put him above him. But no, Howell showed that he can do this stuff and has cemented himself as up there with the guys who are directly above him. There's not that big of a gap between each of these guys. Like There's a gap between Ritter and then Howell, and then there's not much of a gap between the next four. Uh, I just think that Howell is more of a limited ceiling kind of guy, but he did show some um, more, you know, more athletic traits than I thought he had in him this season. Yeah, I completely agree. I mean, we're going to jump up to number three here because that's exactly who I have, Sam Howell, uh, one spot ahead of you. I Yeah, like he is Baker Mayfield. It's I mean, it's a comp that's been used a lot. Um, the ceiling isn't crazy high, but the floor is pretty solid. I mean, like you said, he really added mobility to his game this year. I think – with losing all the weapons that he did, Javante, Michael Carter, uh, Deami Brown, Daz Newsom, I mean, they lost a lot. And that line struggled at times, too. There were some games where he was just running for his life, and he, he did a good job adapting to that and really added a rushing element to his game that I agree. I did not see at all. So that really helps for him. Um, and he can make most of the throws. He's not super flashy, but, you know, he can throw on the run, different arm angles, and he's learned how to, you know, navigate through pressure. So... This is a guy who, unlike for me, for Malik Willis and Desmond Ritter, I think Sam Howell could maybe start right away. I don't know how effective he'll be. And like I said, his ceiling's not crazy high, but I could see him going somewhere like Washington and maybe sort of just coming in and slowly working something out. Um, but it, it's just a solid quarterback, you know, nothing nothing crazy, but this, he should go first round and uh, have a chance to compete for a starting job right away. My favorite landing spot for him right now is the Denver Broncos because they have all those those weapons on the offense right now with uh, Cortland Sutton and Jerry Judy and Noah Fan and they have Javante Williams again and Melvin Gordon's probably gone but they'll be able to bring in other guys and they have this decent offensive line they have this good defense all they need is competent quarterback play and Teddy Bridgewater is a little too conservative for my liking on that team. Drew Locke's the complete opposite. So bringing someone in who can start day one, who has experience and succeeds the most when he's just distributing to his playmakers, some playmakers he's already played with and has chemistry with, uh, I think that's a good a good landing spot for him, especially right in the middle of the first round area. Uh, my, QB th- my QB3, and this is, again, probably somewhere... Eh, it's not that big of a divergence for us, I guess. Uh, QB3 I have is Matt Corral, quarterback out of Ole Miss. Uh, for him, it's just inexperience, really. He only had that a couple starts last season, especially with the, sh- the COVID shortened season, and then he had this season. And the issues that he had in his game were mostly just he was go- he's good. He's got the athletic talent. He's got the he'll change arm angles. He's got the arm talent. He went through a couple fits. Like he he's con- not consistently bad with turnovers, but like he would go through like one to two game stretches where he'd throw like six picks in two games or stuff like that. Where he he'd go through like little spurts. And even though he kept it close with Alabama last year, is he's been, he's really uh, kind of struggled a little bit against the, the, kind of those upper tier guys. And I know Ole Miss is really compatible with Alabama. I just think that with with Corral, it's going to be a, a case of he's going to get better with more uh, playing time. He's kind of one of those guys you probably going to have to just throw into the fire, like how. Uh, Lamar, Jack- like Lamar Jackson was probably not a guy that needed it, but Josh Allen got thrown into the fire right away, and that kind of molded him into the quarterback he was. If you get them, let him go out there and really play, because I don't think his confidence is going to get smashed by a couple games where he's not going to play all that well. So I think giving him those playing times and those opportunity to grow and learn on the field will help him go out there, especially with how limited he was starting in the in college. Okay, yeah, I definitely see that, man. He's a guy, you know, he's got all the confidence. He wanted to play in that bowl game and everything, but I'll get to him a little bit later. Um, Number two quarterback for me, I have Kenny Pickett, quarterback out of Pittsburgh, and this is one of those big rises of this year. Um, Wasn't really on my radar at all coming into the year. I 
did one game film of him last year and it was just not very pretty. So uh, when I actually turned on the tape and put a couple of games that I was super impressed. I was more than impressed. I He's to the point where he could be QB one in this class. And he's, he just, the way he commands an offense as a, as a field general, he just can do it all. Um, very accurate over the short and medium. I mean, even deep ball, like he doesn't have the biggest arm, but he's just so precise with the way he plays. And for his size, he's he's pretty mobile too. People try to knock him for his mobility, but when we saw the fake slide, which is now banned and all that, but um, you know, he he just really improved this season. He's I know he's a little older, but I mean, 23 at quarterback, he's still got a long career ahead of him um, as a, what like 60 year senior. Uh, but uh, he he really impressed me, and he's a guy. Another one where I think you know, I mean, a lot of people want him back in Pittsburgh with the Steelers. Uh, which would be pretty pretty cool, but I just don't know if I see him falling that far. Honestly, that's how high I am on him. Yeah, I I um so for quarterback number two as well, I have Kenny Pickett, uh, quarterback out of Pitt. Another big, like you said, big riser. Uh, I had no, I he wasn't on my radar at all when I did my preseason quarterback write ups. I did not touch him in the slightest. I gave more thought to like players like Keaton Slovis and something than I did Kenny Pickett. I was like, oh. Just another. Yeah. I mean, I've I've been burned by pit quarterbacks before, uh, particularly ones that throw five picks in the first half or their first ever start. But uh, the I I went when I finally got to watching him. I can't remember what game it was specifically. It might have been. Uh, it was North Carolina. North Carolina was kind of. I can't. Did he play Syracuse this year? I can't remember what it was. I'm they pretty, played Tennessee. Was it orange? That, team? Oh yes, yeah. Um, it was a different orange team. Tennessee. That's what it was. <laughs> so he played the game against Tennessee. I think was what really uh, changed my opinion of him. Uh, I, I like his mobility more than most people would probably think of because the people like to peg him into that kind of pocket passer, game manager kind of square, and I don't think he really fits that. I think he's more of a – he's got a decent, decently sized arm. He's got an NFL arm, we'll say, and he yeah. he has the mobility to make plays happen. Like he's not going to be a 90-yard rusher on average or anything like that, but he's going to get you like if you need 20 yards, if it's a third and 10 and you need him to scramble and get that, get that first down late in the game, he'll get it for you. And yeah, he's he's super accurate. Uh, probably the most accurate quarterback in this class. And give him so my, my favorite uh, my favorite place to land him in. Uh, I know the big criticism is his uh, his hand size. He's wearing two gloves with a college size ball. I don't put a lot of stock into that, but at the same time, I can see where some people get coming from. And that's where I kind of get the kind of have issues with the whole going to Pittsburgh kind of thing because it's an outdoor place in a cold weather state. Um, it's something like if you have genuine concerns, if a team has genuine concerns about his hand size, they probably wouldn't want him to go in a place like that. So thinking of it in that light, I thought maybe the New Orleans Saints would be a best spot for him because they got an indoor uh, facility of playing in, so he's not going to have that much issue with the weather stuff. And any, uh, the, most of their away games are in the south where it's warmer and kind of drier at the same time. Sometimes it could be a little wet. Uh, again, that's not my biggest issue, and I don't think he'll be able to last where the Saints pick, especially if they qualify for the pl- playoffs. But that's probably my favorite uh, selection or landing spot for him right now. Okay, fair. Um, my number one quarterback, my favorite landing spot is actually the Saints as well, and it's Matt Corral at number go. one. Um, you talked about him already a little bit. He's a true dual threat. Um, the first thing, again, he was like sort of on my radar, but w- when he popped against Louisville first game out of the year, I was like, all right, this is a guy. Uh, just the way he throws the football, the quick release is just insane. There's – so much velocity on that ball and uh he can make any throw he's got a ton of rushing production he's a competitive guy fiery we saw him play in the bowl game when you know that whole debate is going on and he got hurt but um i I think he's it's a guy you can't question his love of football and he's got all the the athletic traits the arm everything um to to be that guy i know he slowed down a little bit at the end of the season, I know he was dealing with like some other injuries too, which I think kind of hurt him. But um, I just love too much of his game. And I, my favorite spot for him would be New Orleans, which is a, another top sell. They'd have to trade up. But I think if Sean Payton got a guy like him in that offense, I think it would be, you know, they love running with Taysom Hill and whatnot. But I think it would really open up that offense. But yeah, Matt Corral, he, he's right there at the top for me. And I think he's going to have a really successful NFL career. Yeah, and based on all the reports that have come out so far, his ankle doesn't seem to be that bad as of right now. Yep. He, he it was it was kind of more of a precautionary thing, getting him on his crutches, not having him out there. I think I think they I don't know if he's going to be ready for you know the pre draft process testing, but he, for what he should, what he put on tape, he uh, he doesn't really need it. Uh, 
Yeah. In my defense for having him at number three, <laughs> in the preseason, I had him as my QB, tied for QB1, uh, and then I just had, I didn't really, his grade I don't think has changed since the preseason process. I think he's been the exact kind of quarterback. Okay. I, I saw him the preseason. I liked I liked a lot of what I saw, and then from everything I saw this season, it just confirmed uh, what I liked from him. If it wasn't for Kenny Pickett rising so much, and for one quarterback I've kind of fallen in love with, uh, we he probably would be my QB one, uh, and again him. I'm pretty sure I have him and Pickett tied, and I just give Pickett the slight edge just because of his accuracy and now the injury as well. But I think that's not going to be uh, that big of an issue. So for my quarterback one, and what I think we're going to have the biggest debate on here is Malik Willis, quarterback out of Liberty. Uh, started off a quarterback at Auburn, and then they chose uh, Bo Nix over him, which now he's gone. I don't I don't understand that reason, but uh. This is this may be hot takey because I know we have a Carson Strong in this draft class and uh, Desmond Ritter as well. But I would bet I would I would argue that Malik Willis maybe not. I was I was gonna say for like pound per pound, but like even with, even maybe just overall has one of the strongest arms, if not the strongest arms in this draft class. He's able to make throws just kind of like the flick of his wrist. Uh, he has this very. He, he's a. He's kind of like a. He's he's a thicker guy than Lamar was, so he's not as like fast or. Agi- um, he's got some good agility, but he's thicker than him. He's probably. I'm less worried about him taking shots at NFL level than I was when Lamar was coming out. But he's able to have this uh, this arm strength so that even when he's off platform and running and falling down and throwing ball, like he's able to get the ball where he needs to be. I think his biggest issue was he had mechanic problems, which caused a lot of his balls to get away from him. And a lot of his bad plays or turnover worthy plays, I think, are a lot of cases the hero ball because he's not on a, he's on a bad Liberty team. Uh, they put up they they were they were way better than they were supposed to be because he was quarterbacking them. And just his yeah. off his offensive line, even for the FCS where he's playing, it's not the best. And he, he had to constantly go out there and make plays. Uh, I remember watching the Virginia Virginia Tech game from 2020. It was where I first got my eyes on him. And that was, like, I saw the flaws, but I also saw, like, what made him so special. And then watching the games this season, like, even Ole Miss, his stat line looks atrocious. But, like, if you saw how the game went and how what the plays he made were, you would be, like, surprised of how bad he actually played. Because a lot of his picks were because he had five dudes in his face, and he got sacked, like, I think seven times. He was he had the, he was running for his life, playing more of that hero ball. Their ground game was non-existent outside of him. And he did, yeah. he he was the sole entity of offense on that Liberty team, who was already not a great team all, overall. So, I think that that game specifically, and then the game against Eastern Michigan really affirmed to me that like, hey, this guy has elite rushing traits and his elite athleticism, has a great arm, and if you can just get him in a system where he doesn't have to be running for his life every play, uh, and he doesn't have to, he he's he's able to just like go out there, stick, you know, calm it down. I kind of like, so I just thought of this comment while you're talking here. It's not very, like, one for one, but it's kind of similar. I kind of like a comp to Justin Fields, similarly, because he had a strong arm. He, Justin Fields is more of a one-read kind of guy, whereas Malik Willis would, is more of a full field kind of reader. But they have that stronger arm than most people expect them. They have some, when they are, when he when he is accurate, he's pretty good with his touch and everything. He just needs to be able to rein in his lower body. So that's where I that's when I when I look watch him I see the potential whereas like because I can see that these mechanic issues and these accuracy issues can be fixed and if they are fixed I think he would be by far and away the best quarterback in this class. Yeah, you bring up some good points. I mean, I was looking at his numbers here. That Ole Miss game, he was sacked nine times. Yeah, and to even get 173 yards passing out of that, I mean, he rushed the ball 27 times that game. And then yeah, he had sacked six times in the Syracuse game too, but played solid in that one it's just yeah i i want to really like him and honestly i need to see more film on him there's not a a ton out there but i'm working through it um the upside is there i just had issues with him like i mean yeah that's the problem he has to try and play hero ball all the time and there's times where i'm just like throw the ball away just throw the wall ball away buddy and he'll, he'll take bad sacks he'll turn the ball over that's the kind of stuff that kind of frustrates me when i watch guys it's kind of turns me off where you know, you think they're going to clean it up at the next level, and then sometimes it don't. they don't. Like, Sam Darnold was a key guy, and Jameis Winston, two guys, I was just like, 
they had all those traits and I think they were better prospects even, but uh, they had those traits. They just needed to clean those things up and then they never did really. So um, that would be my worry with Willis. I, I don't see him as a guy that starts right away, but he's another, I'd rather bet on him than Ritter figuring it out just based on situation he had to deal with at Liberty, what he had to do. Um, if he can become more comfortable, I'd, I'd become a big fan. It was just really difficult when, when, with what he was doing um, there. I don't know if he developed bad habits through that too as well. So, um, what yeah. I what I like to think of is if I if he had if he was able to stay at Auburn, how much of a different prospect would he be viewed as, and how much different would he be looking at? Because like Auburn, they're not the best, but they're definitely better in in comparison to Auburn in the SEC than Liberty in the. Uh, I think it's Sun Belt. Um, yeah, whatever. I, whatever the, the the that the that conference is called, I don't even know. Uh, just the fact that if he would have been able to stay at one of those bigger kind of schools, like if he was at an Auburn or at like a, a UCLA or something like that, where he had some structure around him with some actual players who will be drafted on the offensive line, players who will be drafted in at like skill positions, he wouldn't have all these negatives on his uh, on his record that he has now that he is at Liberty. And I kind of, I just kind of put myself in that mindset of like, okay, well, if he didn't have to play hero ball, how would I be looking at him as a prospect? So that that's where I look at it from him. I can see, sure. I'm, he's super. Like I said, he's like half a point off of Pickett and Corral. So in any one of them, you could convince me being QB one. Uh, like I said, Pickett was not. I didn't even view him in the preseason, and then all of a sudden he blows up in the season. He shoots yeah. up to a first round quarterback, uh, and I just see the upside with Willis. I see the upside with Corral as well. But like I said, I think that Willis's arm strength is a little bit better than Corral's, and I think his athletic ability is a little bit better. So I just give him the, the tiniest bit of nod, uh, of a nod there. Okay. Uh, quick thing, impromptu. Who do you think will be the first quarterback taken as of right now? Um, your grades aside. Grades grades aside. So that's the issue is because if you're thinking about looking at who who we thought would need a quarterback before the season started. It's like the Eagles and things like that. They look like they're set with Jalen Hurts. The Jags are picking number one overall, most likely. They have uh, Trevor Lawrence. The Lions probably won't want to give up the number two pick for a quarterback like this. So you're looking at who is left over in that scenario. It's like you got like Washington is a team that might want a quarterback, and they have entrenched starters with Heineke and if they bring back Fitz again. So they might be willing to go lean towards the Malik Willis area where they'd want to draft him and stash him because they don't te- you know technically need a starter right away. But then you got a team like maybe the Giants want to draft a quarterback. All this Daniel Jones stuff might just be uh, smoke and mirrors, try to you know get them set up for draft season. Who knows? So it depends on who's taking it first. If I had to bet. Uh, now that Corral has his ankle injury, he was probably the safest bet. I will still stick with Willis being the number one overall quarterback. I actually have money on it that he'd be uh, the number one quarterback taken because of his physical abilities and because if you look at this draft, if you're a team that's picking the top half and you're like, okay, I have to, especially in like a team like Texas too, they drafted Davis Mills last year. You had a team like Minnesota take Kellen Mond. They probably were looking ahead at this draft class, like, okay, this draft, this crop of quarterbacks is not as good as this crop of quarterbacks. I would rather draft a Davis Mills and see what he can do and develop him rather than, I'd rather have Davis Mills on one year of experience than any of these quarterbacks on zero years of experience in the NFL. So you have to look at those kind of teams. They're probably going to pass on them. I don't think the Texans will take somebody. Uh, unless the Texans do take somebody, they're going to want to take somebody who has a higher upside than, say, Davis Mills would, which is where the Malik Willis thing will come in. Okay, yeah. I mean, there's a whole bunch of. T- I mean, the Panthers could be looking quarterback as well. Atlanta, uh, mm-hmm. Denver. I mean, there's a hot stretch in there where it's Carolina, Jets won't take one, Giants, Washington, Atlanta, Denver, Minnesota, sneaky. Um, if they hit Cleveland after them, like, there's a whole bunch of teams in there where there could be sneaky quarterback picks. Just depends how much they like these guys. I know it sounds like. I, I mean, it sounds like a lot of these guys are going to go in the first round. It just kind of depends what teams are looking at. Um, I'm going to go with Kenny Pickett, I think, might be the first off the board. I think he's just risen so much. He's got all that experience um, as a, in a team leader. I think, I don't know, I feel like he's a guy that's just going to a very low risk kind of prospect, even though, you know, this it's been just this year that he's really popped off. I think he's the kind of guy that, you know, can just sort of take in and, a franchise start up and, and look good, but it's it'll be interesting to see what what direction these teams end up going. 
And I wouldn't be shocked because that was the other person. I was really debating between Willis and Pickett because Pickett had that meteoric rise and he's so accurate and he's got deceptive athleticism and he's got all these traits that people want at quarterback. It just depends on who takes him because like a team like Atlanta, I don't know if a team like Atlanta would want to draft Pickett just to stash him behind Matt Ryan because they're tied to him for another year. Where Carolina yeah. is already committed to Sam Darnold for this next season too with his fifth year option. So are they gonna want are they gonna draw draft Pickett and then have him fight with Darnold or have him sit behind Darnold at all? Or are they gonna have to draft him and play him right away? It really depends on or or do they take the project guy that they can sit one for one year and then just keep going with it. Carolina might be more inclined to because of how often they switch quarterbacks around, but a, te- a team like Washington or Atlanta or Minnesota, teams that have these quarterbacks for at least one more year that they know will be their starters, regardless, mo- with either contract-wise or just skill-wise, they might want to tend to go for the project over the uh, regular player, and it might just be like another syndrome of the fact that the Jets took Darnold over Allen or Lamar, where these teams thought, oh, these guys are projects, would rather take the guy, the, the guy right now and now, now the league's kind of like flipping their perspective on it because of that 2018 draft. Yeah, those are fair points. I mean, those are all guys. I mean, yeah, it dep- it, there's just not enough. T- uh, I'm trying to think, you know, some of these teams are just too far down in the draft order. Like right. I said, the Saints, I would like to see get one, like a Pickett or a Corral. Broncos, I mean, I feel like they're just going to have to trade up to do that too. So it might end up being the developmental guy like Malik Willis um, being that first guy. So. Interest. Did you get odds on that Malik Willis pick? Yeah, uh, hold on. It? it was actually so. I, it's probably gonna be wrong. I put. I used uh, not not a plug or anything, but this is the website I use is a uh, Bet Online. And before the season okay. before the season even started, because I had already done my preseason stuffs, I put twenty bucks on Kayvon Thibodeau being number one overall pick. So I had gotten some good odds on that. But then I was like, I need. I was like, a quarterback usually goes number one. And even though Jacksonville has the pick right now, they could trade down if any team falls in love with a specific quarterback. I'm not so sure it would be. But the odds I got from Malik Willis was plus seven fifty. So I put a five dollar bet down to win forty bucks. That's my. That was my my odds I okay. got there. Uh, sure. Yeah. I, I was like, if anyone, because I, I, again, this was preseason. This is before the college football season even started. So I was like, if anyone's going to rise, I didn't proceed Kenny Pickett. But if anyone was going to rise, I thought Malik Willis with his with his talents would go that pretty good uh, that way. But yeah, it's it, it, we take for granted these past few draft classes, and we had a uh, Trevor Lawrence, and we had all these guys, a Joe Burrow and a Tua, where we have guys like, oh, these guys would definitely go number one overall if team picked at there. Now we have uh, guys where it's like, does anybody even have the slight potential to go number one overall? We take for granted all these great quarterbacks and being like, oh, we can write off number one pick real easy right now. Yep, there goes that quarterback. All right, we'll basically start them out, draft at two, and go on from there. We took that for granted, and now we're stuck here trying to reverse MacGyver engineer where these quarterbacks are going to be and how they're going to end up on these teams that we think should get them. Yeah, it feels like every year you have a good idea of what's going to happen, and then you're just like, oh, it's probably going to be all hell breaks loose. And then last year I feel like it was kind of vanilla outside of, like, you know, Bears trading up for fields, Mm -hmm. Jags taking, like, ETN. Like, I know I did. I made a fair amount of coin off the draft that year. But this year, uh, I don't know. It it seems more unpredictable just because of all these teams in the middle that are looking for quarterbacks, the variance of where people have these quarterbacks, and then the top teams in this draft class – uh, not not all needing quarterbacks. They just took some. So um, it'll be interesting to see how, I mean, you'll probably follow like draft media and oh, yeah. see where the rumors are going. I mean, the whole Mac Jones of San Francisco lasted for like months <laughs> and then it's switched to Trey Lance like right at the end. So I guess we won't really know until it comes closer to that draft time. I was, I, I, made, I made some good money on the draft last year too, mostly because I wasn't fooled by the Mac Jones stuff. Because I remember uh, after the Bills beat the, the 49ers on Monday Night Football, he, uh, Kyle Shanahan was talking about how he wanted a quarterback like Josh Allen. I'm like, you can't get more Josh Allen in this draft class than Trey Lance, especially when they moved to the three. I made money on that. I made money on J.C. Horn going at eighth. That was a good one for me. Uh, what else was it? Uh, offensive line. So I made, I made like 100-something bucks off the draft on uh, bets and stuff. So I, I last year was so much simpler when it came to predictions, and this year it's going to be so crazy. And for reference, yeah. for reference of how these quarterbacks are, my, even though I have Malik Willis graded as my number one quarterback, he's like number eighteen on my big board. There's like a, a whole f- whole half of a first round ahead of him graded wise, and he's definitely going to go ahead of some of those guys. Sure, yeah, I was in the same boat with the Trey Lance, the 49ers. I didn't, I didn't believe the smoke in the no. mirror there, but um, yeah, maybe we'll have to do a sports betting show, draft Ooh. tips right before 
maybe put that out a couple weeks before, put our hot hot tips in there, see how we do. <laughs> so yeah, I, I'm hoping so. I, I already got a couple lines in the water, but I'm definitely getting amped up and ready to go for uh, when the draft comes around and see how those, uh, the, when there's more things that get dropped, uh, we'll see how it, how, it have to, how it goes. So uh, sure. thank you for coming on and talking quarterbacks with me. Uh, I know you have a video coming out. I know this video is going to come up tomorrow, which is in relevance to recording this Wednesday. Uh, I know you have a video coming out where we did a uh, the mock draft for the Dynasty mock draft in the Discord. If you go, if you yep. join, if you join the Dynasty Index, you get to get to the Discord and you could uh, participate with us in some of these uh, cool events. So you got that video coming up either tomorrow or pretty soon. Um, I think I'm going to drop it Tuesday after the national championship game. So okay, I'm gonna have some go. hype building. Upload it then. I think it's going to be a two parter, two rounds. So oh, fun. Um, yeah. Yep. Yeah, uh, we've got a couple, we got a, got that coming up. Uh, I'm I'm trying to. I don't know if I'm gonna get. It, I, I was trying to get something out ready for uh, Tuesday, but I'm gonna be getting uh, a college football uh, iceberg video coming out soon. I was hoping to get it done by the national championship game, but it's getting pretty close. I got that in the pipeline. I got an NFL draft iceberg coming up in the pipeline. That's gonna be pretty crazy. Uh, and then I'm gonna probably you know podcast as normal talking about stuff. I I got a couple other. I'm probably going to go over some of the, the prospects I've uploaded to the index so that way we can get a kind of like a refresher there. So I got a lot of stuff going on. I know you got all those film clips going up all the time. Uh, I, you definitely use those all the time for our little scouting stuff. Oh, so yeah. keep up the good work. Everybody go check him out. Follow him. He makes this whole operation run. So go out over, head over to Kill Pro and subscribe to him. And uh, other than that, I'm all good. you got any closing remarks? No, thanks for having me on. It's always a pleasure. Always a nice conversation, and um, we'll see. We'll hop on next time, maybe post Senior Bowl or something. Or oh yeah, whenever. That's gonna be fun. I, I can't wait for the Senior Bowl. I almost went this year, but I think next year is gonna be my year. I wonder, really? I'm a, I I was thinking about it. It's just trying to figure out the logistics of it. Right. There's so many moving parts, and I I really want to go down there. But you know what? There's gonna be a lot more Senior Bowls to come, so we'll have time. Oh, yeah. Hopefully, we can get the draft, the Dynasty Index, up to a point where we can go down there and maybe get some uh, media coverage. Who knows? Oh my gosh! Who I knows? Mean, I see them handing out media credentials like candy right now. So all right, let's get that going. All right, yeah, definitely. That's it for the podcast. I'll catch you guys later.